a bite of lunch or something <laughs> at the end of the day. I, I think I can only say that certainly each person has expressed the, the, the ideas that I share also. And I think if you're here after 5 o'clock on a kind of cloudy afternoon that you are all mentors because there's got to be commitment beyond, you know, 9 to 5. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to say that as mentors, we're doing things that I, I think we're supposed to be doing, although with the speed up and number of students that we teach and, and counsel, it becomes a little more difficult. And so sometimes people get discouraged. But I think with such wonderful students as these, we are the ones who are privileged to be able to work with them because they are inspiring. And I, I'm sure all of you have shared and with each other and certainly in the in the previous presentations, the kinds of challenges that our students have overcome. And in the last few years with the Great Recession, even more difficult in terms of, um, you know, of course, the economic circumstances with deportations of students without a documentation, uh, separation of families. I mean, it's been so severe since 2008 or so, more than in the past years. And so I always say what I can offer is, is not enough, but I have to try to do what I can in terms of navigating this huge university. And it's so maddening when I get a you know an answering kind of message at the other end that kind of troubleshooting is something that I'm really happy to do for students if they need it. So I'm glad they appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and then I'd also like to say that other faculty in Chicago and Chicago Studies say that we witness small miracles on a daily basis, and then sometimes we get to see kind of the long-range outcome. So on a daily basis, students who might be out of money, and I had one just this week who uh, said he was practically homeless. He's just found a garage to live in, and so the place I go is EOP Central to Gina and to Shiva and to others in EOP to try to help out with resources at the last minute, and it's difficult, right? Because to get uh, financial aid at the last minute to try to find emergency housing, it's difficult. But we have students who are so uh, able, but with all the other challenges they face, they need that mentoring to help get them through those rough spots. And then I know that we see small miracles when they end up completing that degree in the face of all these challenges. And I think what's even more inspiring, having walked that hard walk, they know that difficult struggle and they're going to have this four-year degree to make changes in the world outside. And I think that's the other part of it, as the students here you can tell. Uh, they are students who have challenged the institution in ways to change. And as Carol Kelly just mentioned, I just really like the comments that you made, that our students bring so much. And so I think our, our whole institution, I think this, this room full of people excluded, is rethinking that deficit model with their students and their learning skills or their math skills. Yes, those things have to be worked on, but our students have so much to offer in terms of their own organic knowledge and ability to organize. So the Mecha students are just organizers, you know, extraordinaire, who have transformed this place into more culturally relevant and less alienated space, whether it's the Chicano, Chicano House, and Dia de los Muertos, which they organize and 400 people come and attend. Uh, a variety of events that Mecha puts on that helps humanize the institution. So it really is a privilege to work with them, and I think the small miracles are, we see every day are, are really what is so rewarding. And, and I love getting the award, but it certainly is a daily reward to work with our students. And I want to say long range, sometimes the small miracles uh, coming up next week, and it just, just happens that we have two of our alumni returning to speak on a panel. And the panel is called the Racialized criminalization of life, and that's kind of obscures in some ways of what it's about, but they are going to be talking about issues of uh, immigration and how immigrants are criminalized, talking about uh, issues of, of gang youth and also uh, drug policy and how it affects communities of color. But two of the alumni, and Jose Luis may remember one, Humberto Guisad, he 
came right out of, had one foot in the gang kind of life and one foot in college and he just managed to get through um, and someone I remember told him, oh, you're never going to be, he wanted to be a lawyer. You're never going to be a lawyer. But he is a lawyer. And he is a civil rights uh, lawyer. And so he's an advocate and now an expert witness um, for gang-related uh, trials. So he's going to be back speaking next week. And Armando Budino, also another guy, happens, just happens to be not that most of our students don't have one foot in gang activity, but these two happen to, and managed to get through, and now he, his title is, um, so that he's Southern California Policy Associate for the Drug Policy Alliance, and he's coming back to speak on these issues of uh, drug policy and how it affects communities of color. So I'm just really proud and looking forward to seeing them, and those are just a couple of the little miracles. Here's three more. Uh, who are going to go out and do wonderful things. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.